They took my, my love of my life, my future, they ripped my home apart. Who it was they took, it wasn't just a man. He was a, he was a great, great man. But once you've lost a son in such a terrible way, there's nothing that can ever can fill that void. It's just, you just want to touch him and hold him and be able to talk to him one more time, but you can't do that. a great, great son. This guy's a great, great son. My daughter's a great daughter. I've got a great family. And then I've lost one for a while. The first few days, all you do is cry, and it's like a nightmare, and it really still is. But when you think you get a little bit of composure and peace, before you know it, it all comes back, and, and you just lose it all. That night was horrific. When they ripped my ring, when they ripped my ring off my finger, we were saying the whole time, pleading, "Just take what you want, take what you want. Just don't kill us, don't just kill, don't kill us." And I had a gun at the back of my head with a countdown: three, two, and I'm screaming. And my kids are standing there, and I'm like, "Oh, please, God, don't let them kill me. Don't let them kill my kids. Don't let them kill me in front of my kids." I just kept saying, honey, please stay with me, stay with me, stay with us, don't go, don't go. And he died. But I do know that God says, he will not give you anything more than you can handle. So that's what I have to rest on. That is my rock, my foundation of life. And because I've seen the outpouring of love, I am amazed, I know I can do this. I know it. I feel so much love. I cannot tell you all the families that have been restored. And I, I say to people, they tell me stories. You know, I told my kid I loved him. Or my dad, you know, people hugging, people are coming to Christ. And they said, keep telling me those stories because it has more meaning for my husband's life right here.